don't stop. Carelessness, evidently it doesn't just apply to Hillary Clinton. Newly released emails show Hillary's top aide, Huma Abedin, forwarded multiple emails with sensitive intel to her personal Yahoo accounts, including this one with passwords to her State Department laptop back in 2009. And if you recall, every Yahoo account was compromised by foreign hackers back in 2013. There was a big hack. Uh, here now with more on this story is the man who broke the story, investigative report reporter with the Daily Caller, Luke Rosiak. Luke, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Where does this take us now? Uh, it's just incredible. I mean, everything we learn about the cavalier attitude that the Clinton crew had to cybersecurity, it, it's just bordering on absurdity. I mean, Huma Abedin was using her personal email, but it wasn't just any personal email. It was a Yahoo. Yahoo is the laughing stock of cybersecurity. Uh, and when she first came on board on this new job, they sent her passwords, all the government systems. The first thing she does is turn around and email it to her Yahoo account. In 2012, it's well known that, cyber, that Yahoo has these issues. It's, it's all over the news on a particular date that it's been hacked. Five days later, she's sending classified information about Syria to Yahoo. Uh, in 2013, every single Yahoo email is hacked. So Hillary Clinton's talking a lot about, you know, was her server hacked or was it not hacked? But an issue here is the FBI has said that the people in Hillary Clinton's inner circle uh, who were corresponding with her regularly, those accounts absolutely were accessed by foreign, uh, by hostile actors. And again, every single Yahoo account was included in that. In 2014, half, uh, 500 million Yahoo accounts were hacked by a Russian spy. He was indicted. Uh, and Huma Abedin is sending... Uh, it's classified information yeah. about Russia on Yahoo servers. A Russian spy hacked Yahoo. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Luke, one of those emails that we actually have to show everyone at home right now that was forwarded uh, from Sid Blumenthal, July of 2009, it says to Hillary Clinton from Sidney Blumenthal, and the subject is important, not for circulation, you only, Sid. And you can see it says confidential in capital letters there. This is an email that was forwarded from Hillary Clinton to whom Abedin, who was forwarded that to her Yahoo account. I mean, there's a lot of paper trail here. What was it like when you were trying to get this story and finally get it printed? Were people trying to stop you? Because this is a really big game changer. It's actually all right there out in the open, and there's been very little investigative reporting from the mainstream press on these Clinton emails. Mm -hmm. um, batches of, of these have come out uh, because of the Judicial Watch lawsuit. This password one came out in September. Uh, so it's been a couple months now, and we also have learned more about the severity of the Yahoo hacks in recent months, although mm -hmm. it's been readily apparent that Yahoo has just been riddled with holes uh, for ages. But really, it, the, the, Huma sending sensitive information to Yahoo is so frequent that if anyone goes to the State Department website and just clicks around on a few emails, it, it pops right up. Yes. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, we, we had the whole case where they destroyed all those computers and laptops and phones and acid washed them. That looked so terrible. And now you're seeing this fascination with using always private email servers. Not to, it's, it's, it's all very interesting. Thank you yeah. so much, Luke. Great reporting. Thank something you. else. And here now to react to the newly released Huma Abedin documents, Chris Farrell, Judicial Watch Director of Investigations and Research. Uh, Chris, I've, I've gone through a couple of these, kind of hard to make sense of it because so much is redacted. Uh, but I saw a couple of interesting, at least headlines, one of which was a document that was going to the prime minister of Israel. There, there probably was some secret stuff in there, no? You don't even have to guess at it. Anything you see on those pages... It has a little marginal notation next to it that says B1, or any reference to the, the little acronym or, or marker B1 means it is classified information. So it's not even open for debate. It's a fact. And the State Department has said that it's so. So in this case, we now have yet more classified information uh, you know, funneled through Huma Abedin from Secretary of State Clinton onto her uh, now, I guess, estranged husband, the sex offender, Anthony Weiner. So this is a, a nightmare with respect to compromise of classified information. Uh, yet another really grave national security crime that uh, Mr. Comey apparently thinks is no big deal. Exactly. And if it was, just to emphasize a, a pretty obvious point, if it was on Anthony Weiner's uh, uh, computer, right. considering what he was involved with, with that computer, Lord knows where else it is or where else it could have gone. Guaranteed. And frankly, even with respect to Mrs. Clinton's email server, uh, even Comey, as compromised as he is, 
concluded that it was very likely, and I would say virtually guaranteed, that any number of foreign intelligence services, not just the Russians and the Chinese, but frankly, any first-class intelligence service, whether it's the Germans, the Israelis, the Japanese. Or the North of, Koreans. I mean, we know the they, they can do a lot of good harm any on their them, computer. Any of them would have wanted to know what was going on on Mrs. Clinton's yeah. outlaw, outlaw server. All right. Uh, let, me, let me switch, if I can, to what's going on with uh, the Trump dossier, because there's a lot of questions about exactly who paid for it, who shared it with whom. It does seem like there were a group of people at the FBI and the Justice Department that were trying to sell it to all the Trump enemies that they could find both before and after the election. Have you tried to figure out to, to follow any email change regarding the dossier? That's a major subject of one of our investigations. But what is apparent is that uh, Senator McCain sent one of his deputies over, a guy by the name of Kramer, who's being subpoenaed again by the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, it seems McCain was either a witting or unwitting accomplice to a Russian active measures campaign or influence operation, because his deputy, this fellow Kramer, came back from London after meeting with Christopher Steele and he went around Washington, D.C., also trying to peddle the same uh, phony dossier. And so now you have a, a dossier put together by an opposition, I, I like to call them opposition manufacturing, not research group, Fusion GPS, paid for by Hillary Clinton and the right. DNC, and then used as leverage to get FISA warrants. And we should also mention it was staffed by at least one wife or spouse of the of somebody who's working at the Justice Department, Bruce Orr. So, Bruce Orr's I mean, there were, there were just fingerprints all over. But is there any chance that, because we know Congress is getting stonewalled, but you've been putting out your FISA requests, any chance at all that, that you could get information that perhaps a member of Congress couldn't get about what was, who was sending it, whether the FBI was paying for it, et cetera? Well, our track record for years, thank goodness, is that we do get the information before Congress because we go into a U.S. District Court and use a federal legal process to compel the government to produce these records. We've had great success. We never quit and we never forget. So uh, we will continue to press our investigations and our litigation. And I have very high uh, expectations for continued success along those lines. Well, please bring it here first. Chris Farrell, we'd love to see what you come up with. You've so far had a pretty good track record. We appreciate you coming on, Chris. Happy Thank New Year. Dan. Happy New Year to you. The conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch filed the suit against the State Department for Huma Abedin's emails. They are describing this release as a major victory for them. Joining us from Judicial Watch tonight is Chris Farrell, the Director of Investigations and Research. There have been so many email dumps, Chris. Why is this one different? Well, this is the 20th production in this case. This one's critical because it places classified information on the Wiener laptop. Uh, it, it, beyond any doubt, uh, according to the State Department themselves, uh, proves that classified information was forwarded in an unlawful way. It's a direct violation of Title 18 of the U.S. Code, Section 793F, which is mishandling national defense information. I personally have investigated and prosecuted those cases as an Army counterintelligence special agent. Mm -hmm. I know that people have been jailed for a fraction, a tiny fraction, of what has now been made public and documented through Judicial Watch's litigation. And so this really cries out for a legitimate investigation being done. Your earlier clip with Mr. Comey talking about intent mm -hmm. is a fraud. There's no requirement for improving intent under that particular citation I gave you a moment ago. Uh, intent is irrelevant. The fact that the loss or the mishandling of the national defense information occurred, that's the crime. Chris, and, I, well, I want to follow up on that. I'm sorry to interrupt, but, no. but another Comey clip there uh, where he said in Testimony on the Hill, Aberdeen didn't have a sense she was violating the law. It's I've irrelevant. never heard of such a thing. It's irrelevant. And no one, in, let me tell you, no one in the armed forces, the intelligence community, or law enforcement, no one listening to this program tonight who has ever had a security clearance would ever buy that kind of phony excuse. Comey already manufactured his uh, get out of jail free card for Hillary Clinton, you know, months before she was even subject interviewed in July. And yep. that's been documented as well. Frankly, these documents could form the foundation for an indictment of Comey and Strzok, the investigator who is at the center of this entire nightmare of a security problem. I, well, I'm glad you, you mentioned Peter Strzok, the FBI agent who sent those text messages that were pro-Trump 
uh, uh, pro-Clinton, I should say, anti-Trump, right. uh, we've learned more recently. He was in the middle uh, of basically running this investigation and looking through that laptop, in fact. Uh, the fact that we didn't know that then, right before the election, is that grounds now for the Justice Department to say, we need to reopen this, there needs to be a criminal investigation? Absolutely, because on the 2nd of July, uh, when Mrs. Clinton was uh, interviewed, she wasn't even Mirandized. You had federal agents who had reason to believe the person sitting in front of them had committed a crime. And uh, through the lawyering of David Kendall, what should have been a subject interview under oath of Mrs. Clinton turned into a coffee and donut session. And when she sat there and said she could not remember more than 30 some odd times, yeah. it, it doesn't pass the giggle test. No one in their right mind yeah. would believe that. And also, when someone says that, you pause the interview, you pull out her non-disclosure agreement, you have her review it and refresh her recollection, mm -hmm. and then ask her to explain how she doesn't remember Chris, being briefed on this. I've got a minute left. Let's say, for argument's sake, that everything you just laid out is 100% accurate, uh, that there should be a criminal investigation, that there may have been serious wrongdoing here that, that they got away with. But what do you say to the viewer tonight watching this saying, you're relitigating old stuff. Hillary Clinton lost the election. Let's move on. It has nothing to do with the politics of losing an election. What it has to do with is violating national security law and putting top secret sensitive compartment of information uh, at risk, and not just at risk, but likely compromise the foreign intelligence services. Not just the information itself, but the sources and methods of collection. This is the gravest national security crime mm -hmm. one can commit. It's not an administrative oops. This is a crime that borders on treason, and it's wow. punishable at that level. Chris Farrell, important stakes tonight. We appreciate you coming in. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year.